This Regents Chemistry video is on physical and chemical changes, the difference between them, and an, in an introduction to chemical reactions and the different aspects of those reactions. So if we start with physical and chemical changes, the keys that you want to know here are the difference between them. So with a physical change, no new substances are formed, and that's the key, is that we're taking the same substance and we can change maybe how it looks or uh, the shape, but we're not forming any new substances. It's still the same stuff. So an example of this would be a phase change. If we take water, for example, and freeze it, all we're doing is going from water in the liquid phase to water in the solid phase. We haven't changed the formula. This is still just water. It looks different, it's in a different phase, but the compound or the substance has not changed. It's still just water. So if there's no change in the substances, that means it's a physical change. Another example of this would be dissolving. If we take salt water, which is just a whole bunch of salt dissolved into water, that's going to be a physical change because it's still just water and salt, they're just mixed together. So in this case, it's going to be a physical change as well. If we grind something up, if we grind a pill into a powder, that's still the same pill substance, the same pill content, it's just grounded up, gr ground up into a powdered form. Uh, so again, if we're not forming new substances, that's going to be a physical change. A chemical change, on the other hand, is going to be a change in which we're forming new substances. We're changing the substances, forming new substances. So these are going to be not easily reversible. An example of this, cooking an egg. When you cook an egg, what happens is you denature the proteins in that raw egg, and there, there's a chemical reaction that goes on when you cook it. So this is not a reversible process. If we have a cooked egg, we can cool it back down and we can't get it back to be a raw egg because we've made a chemical change here. So a physical change, you can think of these as, as roughly reversible. And if we think in terms of the water example, we have water is a liquid, water is a solid. If we freeze it, we can just melt it back and get liquid water. If we dissolve salt into water, we can evaporate the water off and end up with salt and water again. And in terms of grinding the pill up, we haven't changed the pill substance, so I mean it would be really hard to do, but we could kind of put all that pill powder back together with some adhesive and get it to look like a pill again. So if you're not changing the substance, it's a physical change, that tells you if it's roughly reversible, that should be an indicator of a physical change. A chemical change is going to be not easily reversible at all. The only way to reverse that change is to do a backwards chemical reaction to get what you started with. But again, we'll talk more about reactions in a bit. So the basic parts of a chemical equation that you need to know are the reactants and the products. So the reactants are what you start with. So if we look in terms of th this, this down here, this basic structure of a chemical equation is how you want to think of a chemical equation. The reactants are on the left and they make the product. So any chemical equation is going to have this exact form. It's going to have some stuff on the left, that's the reactants, and then you could think of this arrow as makes, because that's what we're doing. We're taking the reactants, we're changing them and making products. So the reactants make the products. So the reactants, what we start with, they get used up as the chemical reaction goes on. The products, those are what we end up with. So they're formed as the chemical reaction takes place. So we start with the reactants, we use up some or all of them, and we end up making a bunch of product. So if we think of this in terms of, let's just say we have some elements A plus B, and then C plus D, here A and B would be the reactants, because it's whatever is on the left side of the equation. The products are whatever's on the right side. They're what's being made, again. So we're making C and D here, so they are products. And we're using up A and B here, so they are the reactants. So you definitely need to know the basic parts of a chemical equation. So another thing to know here is the phases. This is definitely something to memorize. Uh, the, the indication of the phases for a solid is S in parentheses after the, uh, so we already saw this with water, we put the parentheses after and we get a liquid or we could make H2O 
with an S, that would be a solid. Again, these, these uh, parentheses just indicate what phase, whatever compound it is, what phase it's in. So we could have solid water, we could have liquid water, we could have gaseous water, and then for another substance we could have aqueous, which means dissolved in water, and the symbol for that is AQ. So if we have, let's say, NaCl aqueous, what that means is we have a bunch of NaCl, sodium chloride, dissolved in water. So uh, you definitely need to know all of these symbols for the various phases. So here's just a little visual of all the parts of a chemical equation that you need to know. So we could, in terms of the phases, we could write here, this, this would be a gas for the hydrogen, a gas for the oxygen, and this could be either a liquid or a gaseous water, we'll call it a liquid. You'll be given these phases. You won't have to predict those except for solubility, which we'll get to in a unit or two. But, so these, these are all the parts. Once we add the phases in here, these are all the parts of a chemical equation that you need to know. The reactants, again, are on the left side here. So hydrogen here and oxygen are the reactants. And on the products on the right side, that's what we make. This water here is the products, is the product. So the other part here is the coefficients. What they tell us is how many of each molecule or atom we have. So here, hydrogen, hydrogen is diatomic, that's why we have a two here. So a hydrogen molecule is two H's next to each other, bonded together, really. So the two here, what that means is that we have two of these. So we have one hydrogen, another, sorry, this is a little too small to write that H, but so we have two hydrogen molecules. This is number one, this is number two. Because of this two here, we have two hydrogen molecules. Here, there's no coefficient in front of oxygen. What that means is an imaginary one. So that means we just have one oxygen molecule here. Then we have two water molecules. So remember, water has this bent shape. The water molecules, we have two of them, so one, two. So the coefficients, what they tell us is how many of each molecule we have. So in this case, we have two hydrogens, one oxygen, and two waters. So again, this is the majority of the parts of a chemical equation that you'll need to know. So definitely memorize the reactants, the products, and remember the arrow is what separates the reactants from the products. So anything to the left of the arrow is a reactant, anything to the right of the arrow is a product. So the last thing here that we're going to go over is the law of conservation of mass. What this tells us is that mass must be conserved in a chemical reaction. What that means, and we've probably all heard this before, matter can not be created or destroyed. So if we have a certain amount of mass to begin with, we have to end up with that same mass at the end. It can't go anywhere. We have to have, if we have 20 grams to start with, we have to have 20 grams to end up with. We can't destroy mass. It can't just magically disappear, and it can't magically appear out of nowhere. So we have to have the same amount at the end that we did at the beginning. So here, the total mass of the reactants, that's what we start with, equals the total mass of the products. So we have two equations here. This one is wrong. This is the unbalanced equation. This over here is the balanced equation. And we'll kind of see what the difference between these is. So based on the law of conservation of mass, we know that we should have the same amount of mass on the left side, the reactant side, as we do on the right side with the products. So if we take a look at the mass here, and we've gone over how to calculate formula mass, hydrogen here would have a total mass of one plus one, because we've got two hydrogen atoms, they're each one, a mass of one, so that would give us two total for the mass of hydrogen. Oxygen, we've got 16 for each of them, and we got two, so that makes 32. So total on the reactant side here, we have a mass of 34. And if we look at the right side here, we've got one water molecule here. There's no coefficient, so that tells us that there's just one molecule. And hydrogen has a mass of one. We've got two of those, plus one oxygen. Again, if, you ha if you're struggling with formula mass, there's another video on formula mass, so go back to that and brush up, and you'll see that the mass of water here is 18. So somehow, with this unbalanced reaction, we went from 34 to 18. We magically destroyed 16 mass units 
And that just can't happen based on the law of conservation of mass. What we know because of this is that the mass on the reactant side has to equal the mass on the product side. So that's why we use these coefficients. If we look over here at the balanced equation side, we use these coefficients to fulfill the law of conservation of mass. So if we do the mass here, we have each hydrogen atom or molecule we said was two for the mass. And now we have two of those. So that makes a total mass of four. So oxygen, again, is just the same one oxygen atom here, right? There's no coefficient, so we could put a one there. So the total mass of this was 32. So this time, on the left side, we end up with 36 mass units. Water, we said over here, had a mass of 18. So water is going to have the same mass of 18 here, but this time we have two of them. So 2 times 18, that gives us 36. So here we went from 36 to 36. We have the same mass of products that we did for the reactants. So here mass was conserved. So basically, to verify an equation as being balanced, you can just add up the masses on the left and the right side, the reactants and the product side respectively, and if they come out the same, the equation could be balanced. There are other things that come into play there, but if the masses come out to be different on the reactants and the product side, the equation cannot be balanced. So one last way to think of this, and this will just be kind of an intro to what we are going to be doing with actually going and balancing equations later, we could think of this visually. We could say this hydrogen atom here, if we have a hydrogen and another hydrogen, and then this oxygen, or sorry, this, this would be a hydrogen molecule, not an atom. We have two atoms making one molecule. And this oxygen molecule makes one water molecule. So if we look at this, we can already see that something's a little up here. We have two hydrogen molecules on the left, or two hydrogen atoms, sorry, on the left, and two hydrogen atoms on the right. We have one, two, one, two. But the oxygen atoms, we have one, two, and here we only have one. So this oxygen atom here, where did it go? It just magically disappeared, and that's impossible based on the law of conservation of matter. So. If you have an equation like this, this is unbalanced, and you can kind of see it visually as well, that we end up with a different amount of stuff on the right side than we had on the left side to begin with. So that tells us that something's a little off with this equation. Whereas over here, we could look at this and we have two hydrogen molecules plus the one oxygen molecule. Call these oxygen and these hydrogen. And then this makes two water molecules. So if these are the oxygens and the hydrogens, and then another one of these, this time we balance out. We have two oxygens and one, two oxygens, if we label these. And we have a total of four hydrogens over here, and this is two plus two makes four hydrogens over here. So this equation is balanced because we have an equal number of atoms. But again, we'll go into a whole lesson on balancing later, but I just wanted to give you an introduction on how to verify that we have the same amount of stuff that we have on the left as we do on the right. So if we do one last example here, we could verify this with Na uh, sodium and chlorine making sodium chloride. So sodium has a mass of 23, Chlorine has a mass of 35, if we're rounding to the nearest whole number, and there's two of those. So this is 70, 35 times 2, 23, and if we add these up, we get 93 for the total mass of the reactant side. On the product side, we have a sodium, 23, plus a chlorine, 35, and that's going to make 58. So somehow we went from 93 to 58 here, so this is wrong. If the masses don't equal the total mass on the reactant side and the product side, if they're not the same, that means that the equation is out of balance. So on the left side or on the right side here, we've got the balanced equation. So we can verify that. We've got 23 for the mass of sodium, and we have two of those. We've got, again, just one chlorine molecule here, which we said was 70, because we've got two at 35 each. 
So if we add up the total mass, we have, this would be 46. 46 and 70 would give us 116 for the reactant side. And then sodium chloride, we said it was 58. We know that from over here, so we have 58. But this time we have two of those, so that's gonna give us 116. And we can see here we have 116 for the total mass on the left, 116 for the total mass on the right. So because we conserve mass, this equation can be balanced. Again, we'll talk more about balancing later. It's possible that, that you could have an unbalanced equation that still conserves mass. But for now, just know that if it's not conserving mass, it cannot possibly be balanced. So I hope this video was helpful on physical versus chemical changes and the law of conservation of mass. Uh, if you need to go back and pause and look at some of the uh, examples again, feel free. Thank you.